How do you there guys and welcome back to Edgar TV where today we're going to be looking at the weird and quirky things that Dark players do within games. Here's a couple of examples of things that we've seen or I've seen certainly over my 11 year professional career and some of them you may know about and some of them may not. I mean it certainly was hard for me to find the footage knowing the things I wanted to find because of different little things such as the scoreboard being in certain positions, different camera cuts throughout the program. I've been looking through hours of footage just to get these little clips to give you an idea of the sort of things that I'm talking about when I talk about what the quirky things are that these players do. Let's start off with more of a common known one, Gary Anderson. Now as he approaches the Yoki here, you'll see from the front side, he just stands on the Yoki very slightly before then towing the Yoki. Now, uh, quite a lot of players do this. Gary Anderson, one of the more high profile players that do so, where you see Dave Chisnell straight up and towing the front side of the Yoki. Now, what was interesting is Gary did that on the first time. Now, normally the players that do this do it for this reason. He's already at the Yoki. He's quite a quick player. He gets there quick and he wants to throw his darts. Dave Chisnell's not recovered his darts yet, which means there's a slight delay. And rather than just standing there waiting, it just keeps you moving, keeps you active, keeps you processing. I'm a player that does this sort of on and off, and it is for that reason. If I go to the board and the player's still there, I'll stand on the Yoki first, then come and set and get into that position. Just to keep active and moving rather than standing there like, come on, come on. So, really interesting that he actually did that on his practice darts when Dave Chisnell wasn't there as well after the handshake. So, quirky little one there, standing on the hockey. One we've got here for Rob Cross. This was really hard to find for that reason that I said about the scoreboard. Watch the foot. Now, this is a very small example of what he does there. A little kick on the hockey as he approaches to throw his darts. Let's just watch that again. So, watch as he comes in. He's moving into the hockey and a little kick and then he sets the position. Now this is a very small version of what Rob Cross actually does in these situations, especially in sort of a, a pressure or a big moment situation. I've been stood behind Rob Cross before when he's been in a close game with me and he'll stand and he'll kick the hockey like five, six times before he goes for a double just to sort of, I don't know, just to settle himself into that situation or just to sort of... Again, keep moving and keep active, but keep your eye on that one. Rob Cross kicking the hockey, and a good couple of times as well. Be a hard one to spot because, like I said before, things like the scoreboard, things like they don't record the feet position very often, or different camera cuts. But certainly, if you're going to watch the darts live and Rob Cross is playing, just have a little look for that one. Another one that you may not know, might be worth taking a look at, is where people stand on the hockey. Jamie Hughes, a former winner on the European Tour, and Lisa Ashton, a multiple-time Ladies' World Champion. Two of the players that, I'm not sure if they still do it now, but at certain points haven't even towed the hockey. They've stood back from the line. And I believe the reason for that is they want to get that sort of full extension and the hockey doesn't feel long enough. Another reason comes down to where people play, the locations. It's not always 7 foot 9 and a quarter distance to the board. A lot of places are 8 feet. A lot of places as well where you play women's darts, they play from 7 foot 6. So they might just be from areas that they're used to playing from 8 feet and then they can't feel that they get that full extension of the arm when throwing from 7, 9 and a quarter. So they just give it a little bit of distance and a little get, bit of a gap between the hockey and where they stand. Again, something you're probably not going to see on the cameras, but if you are in the arena, take a little look at that one. Michael Van Gogh in here playing Andrew Gildin, slides across the hockey in position and then slides back. It's a slide to the left. It's a slide to the right for Andrew Gildin. And this is a bit of a quirky one. I spoke about this when I said about the players that are hard to play. It's a little quirky thing that just upsets your rhythm a little bit. He goes in, you think he's set, then he slides across the hockey. That one's not the one, it's the sidestep when he comes off the hockey. Now, this is something you will see on the camera, because you can see his body shift. So next time Andrew Gildin's playing on TV, watch for the second one here. It's the little sidestep. 
Now, this can become more and more exaggerated as the game goes on. These are just the practice darts. And you see there that little sidestep. I've known Andrew before to sort of step off the yockey, walk down off the yockey, and then step back on it again to get the darts out due to where he was standing in his position in that game. But it's just a little quirky thing that you don't often get. A lot of people in the yockey, it's just straight up and down. There's no sort of left or right movement. Andrew Gildin, the only player I can think of, over my 11-year span who actually moves left or right, other than trying to work around a dart, or, but certainly not typewriter in and cha-cha slide. Last one here, Andy Hamilton, you see there, is just a nice little lick of the old fingers, and then he throws his darts, he comes back, and he has another lick of the old fingers you see here. I call this KFC fingers, it's finger licking good. And Andy Hamilton, one of many players who have KFC fingers, who... Always got the hands in the mouth, all the time, hands in the mouth. Now, I have spoke to people about this before, and some of it is just habit, don't even realise they're doing it, and some of it is down to grip. I mean, I don't know how it grips, because it's going to make the hand wet, but I'm not the guy to speak to about grip on darts, but certainly he is one of the KFC finger players. Loves a good old munch on the hammer fingers. I won't go through everybody. There's about 10 people that do this on the tour. Andy Hamilton's the first one I could think of. And he was the easiest one to get footage of because he's the one who does it the most. So he was easy able to get that footage. So there's a couple of players that do some quirky things. Do you know anything else that's quite quirky and different that players do on the hockey? Do let me know down below if you can think of a good example of someone who does it so we can maybe go look at that footage as well. Let the people know down below. This is a communal page. Hit the subscribe on your way down there. Hit the thumbs up. I'll catch you down in the comments section and on a video soon for some more Edgar TV. Edgar TV.